Joanna, come on up here. <sighs> Last but not least. So, I, another Philadelphia story, Gerald. Um, I'm from Philadelphia, grew up there. Um, I, we moved 15 times before I was 10 years old, and people always think, so your parents were in the military. No, they were crazy. <laughs> and, um, and the thing about each move is that my parents started out like they had this Hollywood wedding in 1957. My mother was like 18 years old. She was like Katharine Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor, gorgeous, but in the wedding pictures with this stunned look on her face, like, what the fuck happened? And my father was uh, just gorgeous. He looked like Desi Arnaz, even though he was Jewish because we're Sephardic, and he had that <laughs> Latin thing going on and the guilt from the Jews, but the provider and the musical, and it was just a horrible pairing because they drove each other crazy in every apartment. And this story takes place when I'm 15 years old and we're living in the worst apartment ever because each apartment progressively deteriorated as the marriage deteriorated. So like the high point was living in the suburbs of Philadelphia in near, near Devon, you know, the horsey set, you know, this gorgeous apartment. Now my mother decorated it with everything was soft and beige and brown. And now I'm 15 years old and we've hit bottom. We're living in this high rise in the center city, Philadelphia. And my father has taken over decorating and, and it looks like Battleship Galactic lactica inside. <laughs> I, it's like everything is, my mother's completely given up. She's in the bedroom sleeping most of the time. And uh, she has a good relationship with her psychiatrist. Uh, it's, you know, it, uh, sort of the never-ending uh, painkillers that are always there. But I, I used to think that Pez, dis the, the Pez dispensers were actually named that way because my, the head was always bobbing. And I thought that that was pretty much where she kept her painkillers. And it made sense to me that they were candy. Um, the apartment was hardwood floors. My father decorated everything in steel and glass, okay? Was, everything had sharp edges. It was like he took whatever was internal and just like imposed it on the apartment. <laughs> like this was where he was emotionally in the marriage. And it, I should back up a little bit and say that my sister and I, oh, I have a sister. Uh, <laughs> I should say, the reason that I say this is because she's three years older than me and you know, my, my, the funny thing is, is that even though I have a sister, my father never now or even in, in his whole, in the whole time that we lived with him ever acknowledged that he had daughters. Um, my, he married my mother and then pretty much within the next couple of years, the house became populated with more women. And that was pretty much his view of things and he liked that. And he would do the thing of taking us, we had our Sunday ritual of going to the Lotus Inn, the special Chinese restaurant with the cloth napkins. And we would go in there, my father would like just showboat us and he'd be like introduce us to the mayor d and it was always like so here are my women and i was like five years old i'm like yeah we're his women you know <laughs> <laughs> you know and it was like you know then it would be like these are my girls and then it got worse this is my harem and by the time i was 10 years old and my sister was 13 we're like fuck you dad what the hell is going on and it was it was now it was the 1970s and you know gloria steinem and ms magazine and we're like this we did, of course we would never say fuck you to our father because he would kill us besides besides having this strange sort of like boundary problems with having daughters he also was incredibly violent, but in those days they said, you know, it was a temper. So every apartment that we lived in also had holes in all of the walls for where his fist was going for our head, but just went through the sheetrock. Now, my sister and I were very creative because we had a lot of fan magazines. So we had this one hallway to the bathroom that was dead. We used to take the fan magazines and just put them on top of the holes. We had the entire Jackson 5 on the way to the bathroom. It was the Hall of Fame. And then when you got to the bathroom and you sat down and closed the door, John Lennon was staring at you. <laughs> with that soulful, cynical look. And people would say they couldn't craft, they couldn't pee, they couldn't anything. <laughs> and we're like, you know, it's just like, it became like the joke about, well, you can't piss here, you know? It's like, it, it just, that, that, was, that was life. And here we are, and I'm, and I'm in this apartment now. I'm 15 years old, I'm in the Battleship Galactica. And my sister has just graduated high school. And she comes, oh, I forgot to say, my father has just taken her out to dinner, probably the Lotus Inn. And she's coming back, and it's like midnight, and for some reason she comes storming in the door, and she's got tears streaming down her eyes. And I'm like, what the hell? And then three seconds later, my father is running after her, and he's like, God damn it, Debbie, get back here. So I just don't know what's going on. I go into my bedroom and close the door, and I'm listening, and I hear my sister just disappear into my mother's room, and I don't hear any words, just like my sister sobbing. And like, you know, now it's like a Spanish soap opera, you know, where you can't make out the words, but there's a lot of emotion. And it's like, <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, 
said, and then my mother's like, blah, 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 just tell me, you know, and, then, blah, 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 and, and this goes on for a while, I don't know what happened, and then my sister runs out of the bedroom, and I just open the door, and I see we're, uh, this is the 19th floor, and there's a balcony, and my sister, who has always been a drama queen, is leaning over the balcony, threatening to jump. Fun times. <laughs> My mother is, has her dramatic, I mean, this is like, you know, Sam Shepard territory, long day's journey. She's like, got her by the waist. And all I see is my mother turning around. The glass doors to the terrace are open. My father's standing there in the kitchen. My mother says, is this true, Jules? And I'm like, is what true, you know? And she says, did you tell her that now that she's 18, she should dump her boyfriend because you could be a better lover? Exactly. And my father says, what if it is? So then this is the best day of my life. Because for the whole time growing up, my father has been nothing more than a fucking lech. He has always been on my neck. He took me to see Woodstock, my sister and I to see Woodstock, 1969. I'm 10 years old. We go out of the movie theater, and he spends the next eight hours talking about, isn't it great the way you could see those women breasts? Isn't it great the way they were all so free? Isn't it wonderful the way they were all so naked and running around? We're like, yeah, Dad, really wonderful. When I was 15 years old, my father took me for a walk. I don't know why he took me for a walk. He wanted to tell me about how he was so excited about my new physique. I think physique is old man language for boobs. You know, and I just was like, you know, I don't need this, and I left. And all my life and my sister's life, there had always been this innuendo, innuendo, but it had never been verbalized. It had never come out, and now it was like, I'm not Christian, but I could hear the choir. As soon as that happened, it was like the, the lights and the, the redemption, and the, I knew that no matter how crazy my mother was, that we were going to get the hell out of there because my father had been busted. Thank you. Yeah.